had my three year business anniversary in this business. Um, gosh, I guess it was almost a month ago at this point. I think my date is July 28th, 27th, 28th. I think it's the 28th. Um, so almost a month ago, but I didn't want that to go by. Hey, hey, if you're here, say hi. I didn't want that to go by without um, sharing some wisdom around that because I feel like so much of my perspective has shifted and changed and grown over those three years. And I really want to share some of those lessons. So I'm super excited to talk to y'all today. I have about six that feel really important to me um, and just kind of scratch them out uh, right before getting on here. But they're the six that I think have made um, the biggest difference to me. And so that's kind of what I want to impart on you. I'm sure I could think of 60. But um, if I really think about like what made the biggest difference for me, it's for sure these six. So that is what I'm going to share with y'all. Alicia says, wow, that's all you're so dang wise. Thank you, Alicia. I'm so happy you're here. Hey, Paula, so good to see you. Okay, cool. So let's dive in. The first one, if you have ever <laughs> worked with me, talked to me, been in this group for any length of time, you know that this one is the thing I preach all the time, which is that consistency trumps everything. So that has been just like the biggest, biggest lesson, I think, um, in these three years is that I will give myself credit in that I have just been massively consistent. Like I probably haven't missed more than a day or two of content um, here and there over these three years. Like I have probably missed maybe a handful of weekly emails. Um, like I have just been massively consistent and it doesn't mean that I have always done that. Like as I've grown, I've gotten a team and they've helped me be really consistent. But I just can't stress this point enough because consistency literally trumps everything. Like there are so many people out there in the online space that if you look at, you're like, eh, their content's okay, but they have like a million followers because they are just being more consistent than everyone else, right? And so I think that sometimes we think like, oh, it's just about the content or it's just about how good I am at this or it's just about how well I serve my clients. And sure, that all factors in, but the biggest piece of your pie that's going to determine your growth, your momentum, all of that is always going to be consistency. Like I promise you there's not an influencer that you're following online that you looked up, that you really look up to that themselves has a successful business and a big following that probably isn't just being massively consistent, right? There's a I was telling someone about this recently. I can't remember who I was talking to about this. There's this fashion blogger that I follow, and she has like, I don't know, like 700,000 followers or something like that, right? And I just love her. I think she's wonderful. Nothing she puts out is like crazy or revolutionary. I watch her Insta stories like it's my full-time job, and most of them are like her kid eating lunch or like, you know, her brushing her hair and putting on makeup. Like, they're – she – they're not anything crazy, but she is more consistent than almost any human I've ever seen. And it's one of the things I'm so fascinated with and in love with about her. Um, and I can consume her content all the time. And I think that is what our people want from us. They want, I mean, I, like I care what her kid is eating for lunch, y'all. Like, right? Like this is what we need to create with our people. It doesn't have to be what our kid is eating for lunch, but it has to be like they feel like they're in a relationship with us. They see that consistency. They feel like they can come to us each day and get, you know, whatever it is that you give them, whether that's inspiration or connection or permission or valuable posts or whatever, like that is the most important thing is that they want to consistently be able to come to you and see you showing up, right? Hey guys, Paula says, hey there, Lacey. Yep. Consistency is the boss. It's so true. Um, by far. So like, you get to figure out what consistency means to you. Like maybe it'll mean every day, maybe it won't. But like that piece is so important. I would say it's especially important as service-based entrepreneurs in the sense that like, I want to know that you're going to show up consistently for me if I pay you to do this service. So if I see you showing up super consistently in your business online and with content, I have a pretty strong sense of safety that you will do the same for me. If I see you being pretty erratic um, in your content and how you show up online, 
I really have nothing to go on to say that you will show up for me consistently, right? And I know that's always like not the fun thing to say because I think sometimes the people that want to serve their clients the best find it difficult to show up consistently because they're worried about their clients. But it's just true, right? You guys, I'm sure, have had that experience of like you feel safer hiring someone that you see showing up online really consistently. Does everyone agree with that? Like has that ever impacted your buying decision? If you're watching, I would love to know that because that's for sure impacted my buying decisions, right? Like if you're, you know, very, very, very sporadically showing up, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, I am going to need you to really show up for me if I hire you for this service. So this doesn't necessarily feel great, right? Um, I'm digging these words together, consumable consistency. Alicia, I so agree with that. I think that people, I talk to my clients about this all the time. I think that people, sorry, you guys, my nose itches like crazy. Okay. <laughs> I think that people all the time think that their content has to be like revolutionary, right? And I I talk to my clients all the time about like it just has to build a relationship. So um, as an example, like if you talk to your best friend regularly, like some of your conversations are going to be super short and sweet. Some of them are going to be really in-depth and life-changing. Some of them are going to be a quick catch-up. Like all of your content does that. It's just like is it consumable and is it consistent? It's like this blogger that I was talking to about like, Sometimes she knocks it out of the park and sometimes it's like, you know, her kid eating lunch, but it's consumable and it's super consistent. So I think those are perfect together, Alicia. I love that. Um, so yeah, consistency makes people feel safe buying from you. It makes people feel connected to you. It makes them feel like they're in a relationship from you, with you. It makes them feel safe with you, safe purchasing, safe learning from you, all of that kind of stuff, right? So it is like the non-negotiable here, right? I, I think, you know, it's if you showed up in your business for 30 minutes every day for the next year, there's no way you wouldn't have a successful business, you know. Um, I guess it would depend on in what way you showed up to a certain extent. But, I mean, if you were getting out there and consistently showing up for your tribe every day for 30 minutes, like, you would have a super successful business. It's really as simple as that. And the momentum starts to carry you, Right. And it also becomes a habit. There's not even a question in my mind of like, am I going to put out content? Am I going to show up every day? Like, it's like, it just happens because it is, right? So if you're at a place where you're like, oh, consistency feels really tough for me, pick one thing first and start there. But there is nothing more important that you could do in starting a business than that. Guarantee you hands down. If anybody on here has questions about that or you're like, wait, I don't understand how to show up consistently or this is really tough for me for this reason, like replay or live, drop them. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I would love to answer your questions on all of these. So just like let me know as I'm going if you have questions around any of this. But I'm going to move on to the next one for now. This one's a good one. <laughs> it stops taking stuff personally, right? I would say with clients, with social media, with anything, stop taking stuff in your business personally. I think it's super easy to do because in many ways we're selling our personalities when we're uh, a service-based entrepreneur. We're selling like who we are and how what we believe and how we show up in the world. But there is nothing more valuable than separating who you are as a person from who you are as a business owner and not taking it personally. I've had two or three client, three clients in the past week have issues where their clients kind of had a wobble and were um, like, you know, complaining about something in a program or not sure if they wanted to continue their service or whatever. And for all of them, that was my first piece of advice. Like, stop taking it personally and step back. What does this client need from you right now? It's normal to have a wobble in business. It's normal to have a wobble in anything that you're applying yourself to in life. What do they need from you if you weren't taking it personally? And Every one of those three clients of mine ended up making their clients happy and getting their clients back on board simply because instead of being like, this is a personal attack and you don't like this about my program, oh my God, I suck, or like, you want to stop working with me, oh my God, that's terrible, bye, I hate you, like, no, because all of them didn't take it personally, they kept working with these clients because it's totally normal to have a wobble, it's totally normal to get feedback about your program. It's totally normal for someone to be um, projecting like their like 
you know, stuff onto whoever they're working with in whatever capacity, whether it's done with you, done for you, coaching, coaching in business, coaching in fitness, anything, right? So the reason that this one has been such an important lesson for me is because when I separate myself out and don't take stuff personally like social media comments or stuff that happens with clients, I have such valuable perspective then to actually handle it with ease and with grace and with a business mindset in place, right? And I would say with a people-oriented mindset in place instead of trying to like protect myself. Um, so I think that that one's really important and really have been a lesson that has served me well is because I think that when we start business, everything feels personal. The amount of likes we get, the amount of comments we get. If a client is like singing our praises every time they talk to us, if clients never feel stressed, like your clients are gonna have a human experience. Your followers are gonna have a human experience. So sometimes they're gonna be in love with you. Sometimes they're gonna feel frustrated by something you say. Sometimes they're going to think that you're, you know, queen of the world and sometimes they're going to think, you know, you could have done better. But like the whole point is, can you stay in that with them and can you take yourself out of taking that personally? Because if you can, it's so easy to grow from those experiences, from those opportunities. It's easy to deepen relationships that way, whether it be with a client or follower. If you take that personally, all you do is shut yourself down and you start making your business about how you feel personally rather than how you can serve, right? So that one is so useful if you're finding yourself taking everything personally like on a post and what someone says and if you get comments or with every client you're putting this like massive amount of pressure on yourself. Give me like an emoji if you've done that. Like I think everyone that, you know, has started a business has put like just this tremendous amount of pressure on themselves around um, making sure everyone has the most perfectly happy experience with them ever, right? Can you all relate to that? I totally can. If you can, give me an emoji. Um, because I think that permission to feel like that, but also permission to stop taking it personally. Like I say to my clients all the time, like, if I don't piss you off at some point, I'm not really doing my job, <laughs> right? My job is probably to ruffle your feathers and to piss you off and to push you when you don't want to be pushed. And, um, to point things out to you that you maybe don't want to hear, Sarah Baker, <laughs> right? It's true. We all do it. Hey, Ricky Lee. Um, so it's okay if your clients are having a human experience. It's okay if they um, have different emotions throughout their journey with you. It's okay if your followers do. Like I've had people, you know, follow me for a long time, take a break because something I said really triggered them and then come back and hire me, <laughs> you know? So the, le the less you can take all of this stuff personally and the more you can see it as like everyone being a human, having their own human experience, the easier it will be to run this business and the easier it will be to like grow with people and hang in there with them, right? Hey, hey, Ricky, Lee, Alicia, yes, yes. When you say I'm about to give you a hard time is when I know it's about to get good. Totally, like I'll preface that with my clients. I'll be like, listen, I'm about to piss you off or I'm about to give you a hard time or like, buckle up because shit's about to get real. But like, that's the whole point is like, if you're willing to, like, I'm willing to piss my clients off because it's not personal, right? Like, I'm not going to be upset if they're upset with me, unless of course I like crossed a boundary or something like that. Right. But my point is like, if you don't take it personally, you're really there for whoever's in front of you. It's so much easier, both client wise and tribe wise. Right. So that's been one of my big lessons for sure. Again, like as a control freak, that's been a hard one because I, of course, want to control everyone's reaction. I want to control that they feel good all the time. And now I realize like I can't do that. I can only control that I feel like I'm showing up as the best coach and that I'm not making it about me, that I'm making it about them, right? Okay, um, which kind of leads right into the next one. It's a little bit different but similar, which is make business decisions. <laughs> um, uh, is another big lesson. Hey, Suzanne, I need that. <laughs> what do you need? Someone to give you a hard time. <laughs> not, I'm pretty good at that. Sarah Baker <laughs> can attest to that. <laughs> um, so the next one is make business decisions, which seems like duh. But what I see so many people do, like a lot of my clients do when they come to me, I've totally done it in the past, is we're making personal decisions for our business. That happens all the time. And what I mean by that is like, say 
I have a need that needs to get met. Like I have this super high need. Actually, this is really true for me. I have a super high need to be understood. Like very high. <laughs> ask my friends and ask my boyfriend. I have this like, like deep, deep, deep desire to be understood. I could spend most of my time in business making decisions that lead to that. Does that make sense? So like every decision in my business could be to fulfill this personal need I have of being understood, in which case I probably wouldn't put out as much content. I probably wouldn't say things that could be triggering. I would be very scared to say something controversial on the off chance that it was misunderstood. I would be very scared to approach my clients about certain things. But I need to make a business decision, not a personal decision. So that's a personal need, but my best business decision is to put out stuff that I believe in, is to say shit even if people aren't going to like it, is to give my clients a hard time if they need it, right? Another example would be, um, say like a personal thing is, you know, personally I would really like to, I don't know, I'm just going to make something up, take three weeks off this month. But like, is that the best time in my business to do that? Does it actually make sense strategically? Is that the smartest move based on everything I've been doing? Maybe if I've prepped for it, but maybe not <laughs> if I just kind of want to do it all of a sudden. Or maybe personally I'm having a hard time, but then I'm like making a business decision based on like, personally I'm having a hard time, so I'm going to totally pull out of my business. I'm not saying there's not a balance here because you are your business. So if personally you're having a hard time, you have to find that balance. But again, I think that it has to be business decisions coming into the equation, right? Hey, Lisa, thank you for joining, Suzanne. Yes. Uh, Natalia, I was just telling my husband yesterday how much I enjoy working with you because you just cut through the crap and tell me the truth. Oh, thank you, Natalia. I take that as a huge compliment. I love working with you. Um, and I love how willing you are to hear that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so I'm not saying that personal can never impact business. Obviously, I went through a divorce last year, and I had to um, I had to think about what I really needed. But but the decision was still a business decision because I was having to ask myself, what do I really need to show up as the best version of myself in my business? So I did need to pull back a little. I did need some extra downtime. I did need to delegate more to my team. But it was still a business decision. Does that make sense? I think. So often we're trying to make personal decisions, fulfill personal needs through our business, and then we're like, why is this not working? I'm just massively confused, and it's because we're not treating our business like a business. We're treating it like a barometer of our personal feelings and emotions. Does that make sense to everybody? I think that could sound a little cold, but I actually don't mean it in a cold way. The way I mean it is that it's what ends up frustrating people so much and making them quit their business because they've made all these personal decisions for their business and then they're frustrated because it's not working. And it really can be both, right? You can decide to take time off or to show up differently or to add things or pull back on things because it helps you thrive, but it still has to be a strategic business decision, i.e. when I thrive, my business thrives, instead of I feel like shit this week, so my business is going to suffer. It doesn't have to be like that. And that switch in your mind of like, what business decisions am I making are so important. I actually had this conversation with a client recently where up to this point, most of her business decisions had been driven by like personal finances. And so what I mean by that is like, if she had a big bill coming up or if she had a trip she wanted to go on or whatever, then she would launch something or do something. And so all of her strategy business-wise was being driven by these personal financial needs instead of being like, well, overall, this is how I want my business to operate. This is the amount of money I want it to make. This is when I want to do launches. This is how I want to be strategic. This is what I actually enjoy. It was all these like spur of the moment decisions based on personal finances. And she was super frustrated all the time about it, right? Hey, Brandies, thank you for joining. Yes, I'm going through my six lessons. So some of them at the beginning are obviously very good, but you're totally coming in at a great point. So again, make business decisions that support you personally, but do not make all of your personal decisions for your business, right? Because when you do, you're going to constantly feel frustrated. You're going to constantly feel like, why is my business not working? And it's because so much of the personal is coming into it and it's dictating it and driving it, whether that's like an emotional need, a financial need, whatever. 
But when you can get strategic about like your the business, so you have needs, yes, but how do you make those business decisions instead of personal decisions, right? So I hope that helps. I think it's just like a shift in your mindset and the way of thinking about it. Um, and I think it's also a shift in really seeing yourself as running a business, right? So I try to think of like, how can I make a decision for a lit up life versus how can I make a decision for Lacey? Does that make sense? Whether your business is your name or not, does it matter? It's just like, how do you make a decision for the business versus a decision for Lacey? Because if I'm making a decision for Lacey, I'm probably not saying anything controversial because it might trigger this like deep need I have to be understood, right? If I'm making a decision for a lit up life, I'm always saying the thing I want to say. Does that make sense? Uh, let me know if y'all followed me there because that one feels a little harder for me to articulate in the way that I want to say it. Um, next one is kind of a twofer, a twofer, twofer, um, which is get really good at a couple things and make sure those couple things are things you like. <laughs> so that's one point wrapped together, but get really good at a couple things, make sure those are things you actually like. So I'm going to run through this one kind of quickly because I feel like I've been talking about this one a lot lately. But it's this idea that like when you get really, really good at a few things and they're things you like, your business can't help but grow because then you will be consistent. Then you will be testing and tweaking. Then you will be improving. Then you will want to show up. That's when people are talking about ease and flow. That's what it is. Get really good at a couple things and make sure those are things you love. Uh, Alicia says, I love that alert mindset trigger question. <laughs> totally. Um, so as an example, this group has always been a thing that I really loved. I love building communities of women. I love hanging out with other women. I love getting to share but have you guys share, like, you know, I talk about even energy exchange all the time. This group feels like that for me. So one of the things I have poured all my energy to in my business is this group and getting really good at it and getting better at running it more efficiently with more engagement and better ways, sharing content, you guys like showing up in different ways. Right. But I've had this group like basically since I opened my business, um, and have been really strategic about, the speed at which I wanted to grow, like I knew I didn't want to grow it super fast. I knew I wanted it to feel like a small community as long as possible and still engaged and all of this stuff. So my point is I've gotten better at that over time because I've let it continue to be my focus. So for almost three years, this has been one of my top focuses really, really consistently, right? Which is really important because that's how I've gotten better, faster, and created way more ease around it. If I had just focused on it a little bit, then done 13 other things and kind of come back to it and kind of gone away, I would have seen those results. In other words, I might have closed it down at some point because I wouldn't have been as engaged and I would have been like, what's everyone's problem in here? And da, 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 I'm just kidding, right? But like the point is the reason it keeps working is because it's one of the things I really like. Because it's a thing I really like, I show up really consistently. And because I show up really consistently, it gets really easy, right? Suzanne, did you see the front of the mug? because it's really cute. It's Alice in Wonderland. It says, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Really big fan of this guy. Um, so get really good at a couple things and make sure there are things that feel good because you will so easily show up and do them then, which I think goes all the way back to our first point of consistency, which is like, if you like what you're doing and you know you're getting better at it, guess what? You're going to keep showing up and doing it. If you're doing 15 other things and you never get to perfect a thing, you never get to go all in on a thing, you never really find the thing you enjoy, it's going to be a really long uphill battle, right? Suzanne says, I love my group, but it is work. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Like that's why you got to pick a couple things too, right? So this group takes a lot of my time and energy, though show but I like it, it's worth it, and it's something I wanna pour my time into and have for the last three years and have seen that pay off massively, like hashtag worth it, right? For y'all, that might be something different, like it might be your Instagram, it might be your email list, it might be video, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, pick a couple things and go all in. So for me, this group has definitely been one of them. Super consistent emails to my list has been one of them. And then over time, happy thoughts and live streams has evolved to be one of them. But 
I mean, like really, that's all I do, you guys. I email my list consistently. I show up in this group and I live stream. That's it. And I just have gotten better and better at those things over time and found ways to do them that felt good, right? And really perfected that versus like trying a hundred things. Like people will be like, oh, are you, what are you doing on YouTube? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> what are you doing on Instagram? Um, repurposing the content I put in my group. Like, <laughs> not that I won't eventually do better and expand even more into those things, right? But the point is, if I can get really good at a thing, then things feel easy and everything else feels fun and exciting when I get to experiment with it. Sarah and I have been experiment, experimenting with doing way more Instagram stories for Happy Thoughts Cool because I'm at a place where this all feels like such a well-oiled machine that that feels good to experiment with, not like, let me throw a Hail Mary and see if this next thing is the thing. No, th this is all working, so that next thing is just fun and exciting, right? Brandy says, love that. Alicia says, oh, you're speaking to my Gemini and she's not digging this theory. Totally get it. I mean, listen, I think that this is going to translate great to my next point, but it's that business is really easy, but like making it easy and getting out of your own way is actually the hard part, right? I think that we all want to go in like a ton of different directions and you have to figure out, you know, where the balance there is for you. But the consistency piece is almost never going to go away no matter what, right? Lisa says yes, and you are there for your clients. 100%. That's a great point, Lisa. That's another huge value for me. It's probably the biggest value in my business is serving my clients really well. All the marketing stuff comes second, right? Happy to hear you say that. I love my Instagram, and it's something I like, so it's easy. Totally. Do what you like. It's, it's like literally my point. You're really good at a couple things. Do what feels good right? It's like, you have to pick the thing you'll actually do. I've probably said this on here a ton of times, but I'm going to say it again because it's so worth it. But it's like with exercise, like if you're doing a kind of exercise that you hate because you think it's what's going to get you to lose weight the fastest, like it's never going to actually get you to lose weight the fastest because you'll never be super consistent with it long term because you hate it. If you're doing an exercise you like, it's probably going to be the fastest way for you to lose weight no matter what it is because you're going to do it way more consistently than you would do anything else, right? Business is exactly the same. Pick the thing you like to do it enough consistently and you'll see results with it. Suzanne says, yes, I stick with my group, podcast, blogging, and Pinterest. Anything else has been time consuming with no results, which equals hating your business. Oh my gosh, couldn't agree more. Which is to another point, Suzanne, which is great, which is like if you're doing 16 things, you're not doing anything well. It's just really time consuming, right? And you're not going to get results from it. And that's how you hate your business where you're like, I'm working all the time. I'm doing all these things. I'm not seeing any results, which is to my point of get really good at a couple things because you're not, you're one person. Maybe you have a small team, but you're never going to be able to be good at seven platforms and like six pieces of marketing when you're just you plus you're trying to serve your clients, right? So that's another point about picking a couple things is because then you'll actually be able to do them well. When you're picking seven, you're not gonna be able to do them well. It's gonna be real hard. Um, all right, so my next point, point number five, is business is really easy. It's like really easy. Getting out of your own way is the work. <laughs> Um, thank you for the live. I'm off to my massage, self-care for the win. Have fun, Suzanne. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a good massage. Um, okay. So yeah, so business real, real easy. Getting out of your own way is the actual work here. Like if you really think about it, right? What I just told you, like I've done this group, I do live streams. <laughs> what else did I say? I email my list consistently. How long does it take to write an email to your list? How long does it take to do some posts in a group? How long does it take to do this live stream? I don't know. I've probably been on for like 30 minutes at this point. We'll probably wrap up in 10, 15, right? <laughs> and this will be my email to my list, you know? Um, it's easy to do this stuff. It's easy to show up for this stuff, like, right? But getting out of your own way is the really hard part. So i.e. showing up even when you don't want to, not second guessing yourself, actually giving yourself time to be strategic in your thinking, testing and tweaking, working on your mindset. All of that is the work. 
the practical pieces of showing up in business have never been easier, actually, in my opinion, right? The platforms we have, the way we can share content, the, the, the ability to quickly connect with a ton of people, the fact that like there are these huge pockets of our ideal people in Facebook groups and that we can find them like that, that we can literally pay Facebook money to pick out the exact people that we want to talk to. Like it, business is so easy, you guys. It has never been easier. We are the work, getting out of our own way, showing up consistently, believing it's possible, believing that if I do the things I love, I will get the results I want. Like the mind is your challenge point, right? Sarah says, totally, I feel all of this pressure to figure out IG stories. And then I'm like, wait, why? Totally. And also like, what does figure out even mean, right? Like, I think that's such another point where it's like, leads me to my last point, which I'll get to too, which is like, there's no secret to all of this, right? So we'll go to that in a minute, but it's so right. Like we feel all this pressure to like know a thing or figure a thing out or whatever. And really we could just make it so simple. Show up super consistently, get good at a few things, love the few things you're doing, work on your head and get out of your own way, right? It's like, that's the whole game here. Um, you know, I think that, and I'm going to use like a, a few other examples, but it's really true with anything in life that you want, right? Do you want to lose weight and feel good in your body? Cool. The way to do that is really simple. Eat healthy, move your body, right? Getting out of your own way to do that is freaking tough work, right? Do you want to learn a new skill? Cool. It's probably really simple. There's probably, you know, specific steps you could take you know, getting out of your own way to believe it's possible and that you can and that you're going to be good enough and all of this stuff is like always the hard part. Do you want to uh, travel? Cool. It's probably really easy to like book the ticket and make the plans, but getting out of your own way to do that and not second guessing yourself and how much money you're going to spend and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm just making stuff up here. I didn't actually think this through, but you know what my point is, right? So like most things in life that we want are very, very simple to execute on, we're just the ones that are always in our own way, right? So stop thinking that business is hard. Stop thinking online business strategy is hard. Stop thinking there's all these things you don't know. Business is really, really, really easy. This, taming this beast, is the work. It's the harder part. But what we often do is decide that business is hard. So we put all this energy into figuring out business right? And pretend like the mindset stuff will just work itself out or it's not really there. It's just this like little bitty piece and it's totally the opposite. It's like 10% strategy, 90% get out of your own way mindset stuff, right? So business, super easy. As soon as you can come to that conclusion and kind of embrace that, it will start to feel easier. But the work again is to keep working that mindset. Keep believing that business is easy. Keep getting out of your own way at each new level. Keep looking at what's going on in your head versus like worrying about how to learn the next thing like Sarah said or figure it out, right? So that leads me to my next and last point, which is stop thinking that everyone has a secret that you don't have. Um, so I say this all the time, but it's like there is no secret to success. But if there was, it would be to stop thinking everyone's hiding a secret from you. Right? I think that this is like the biggest thing I see keeping um, business owners stuck is that they really think that there's just like this one thing that if they just knew this one thing, that everything in their business would be different. If, if someone just told them the secret or told them the steps or told them that one thing they did, that everything would be easier. And it's just not true. The biggest thing holding you back is that you think there's something you don't know and that you think someone has a secret you don't have, right? Um, like I've been really lucky to have some great mentors along the way that totally made me realize like they're not doing anything I'm not doing. They've just been doing it longer and more consistently than I have, right? And I think that that's what I want to impart on you today is like probably there's almost no one that's like, doing all these crazy things that you don't know of in the background. They're showing up super consistently. They're talking to their people. They're being real. They're being themselves. They're sharing their value, right? They're not doing all this shit that you don't know about. 
It's not like I'm here live streaming them behind the scenes. I'm like, you know, like rub my head, pat in the belly and spinning around three times. And if I just told you that, then your live streams would take off, right? It's not that. You're seeing what I'm doing. Like you can literally see my entire business model, right? Um, aim, Kristen says, amen. Hold on. Amen. Thank you for saying that about the secret. I don't know. You're so right. Brandy says, I've definitely had that thought. Yeah. Like, I mean, literally you guys, you could go through my entire series of email sequences. You could read my whole website. You could watch every piece of content I put out in this group and you would know everything I'm doing. There's really not a big secret. Like, sure. Do you not know how I structure my team and who does what and how I think about certain things that I do? Of course. Right. But practically speaking, there's nothing crazy happening <laughs> that you don't know. Does that make sense? So it's not like business coach can't like impart uh, knowledge upon you or can't teach you things. It's not to say that. It's just to say that like I think that we think that there really is this secret and there's just not. Just like with anything else in life, there's not, right? <laughs> there's not like, oh, if I just knew this one thing that like, you know, if you eat kale in a certain way, your metabolism speeds up by 500 times. Like, it's it's not that, right? There is no secret. It's all out in the open. You can see what anyone is doing in their business, actually. It's super transparent and easier to see than ever before, right? You could go look at anybody you enjoy following and see what they're doing. And no one is keeping this secret from you, right? They've just been doing it longer, more, more consistently than you have, right? Um, if somebody looks up to somebody else, I always say to them, like, are they selling more than you? Are they more consistent than you? Are they showing up more than you? Like that, it's almost always that kind of stuff, right? But the reason that coaching and things like that are so valuable is because you have to get out of your own way enough to do that, right? Right? That's the ticket. You have to get out of your own way enough to do that stuff and to stop thinking there's a secret you don't know. So that's a huge piece of this is like step one, stop believing there's a secret, right? Step two, get out of your own way. Step three, show up super consistently and <laughs> take us to church, Lacey, Sabrina. This is so true for you, right? Like so many people will ask me like, oh my God, Sabrina's business has just taken off. She's amazing. And I'm like, she implements faster than anyone I know. She's fearless in how much she shows up. She's mega fucking consistent and just so committed, right? It's not because you like know this giant secret that everyone doesn't know, right? You're just in it and doing the thing. Sarah says Clementine is the secret. Sarah, <laughs> you might be right. Um, Clementine, my, my balloon unicorn, is quite the secret. But, you know, I think in some ways to, to be silly, but to make a point with that, part of the secret is like, we're just showing up and being silly and being ourselves. Like Sarah, Sarah and I found this freaking blow up unicorn at Publix, had the best time with it, brought it on our live stream, took a bunch of pictures with it, took a bunch of videos with it. And like, like we can, we can be like, you know, there's no secret to that, but the secret was just like showing up and doing it, showing up and making this funny thing that happened in life, a thing that we share, showing up at the risk of feeling ridiculously silly. Um, that's the whole thing, right? So it's like business is super easy. <laughs> there is no secret. We just have to get out of our own way enough to do it, right? Um, so I'm just going to kind of revisit the points real quick just in case you were just joining us. Point one, consistency trumps everything. Point two, stop taking stuff personally with both clients, social media, all of the above. Three, make business decisions. Most people are making personal decisions in their business right now. Um, number four, get really good at a couple of things and make sure, sure those are things you actually love and enjoy. Number four, business, or five, sorry, I can't count. Number five, business is really easy. Getting out of your own way is the work. And finally, Stop thinking everyone has a secret you don't because nobody does. Sabrina says, always so true. So those have been, I mean, listen, I, like I said before, I could come up with probably 60 lessons because, you know, basically every day in business is a lesson, right? Probably come up with 365. But ultimately, these three or these six have served me over the last three years in the biggest way. And I think they've contributed the absolute most to my results. And I just want you guys to take notice that none of these was like, 
Facebook ads or a super great funnel or this one thing that happened. It's all like how you're showing up and how you're thinking about things. So when I really look at what gave me the biggest results, it's these things. It wasn't like one thing I did or one way I showed up or one secret that I knew. It's literally like that I was super consistent, that I paid attention to how I thought about things and that I kept showing up even when things were tough, right? So hopefully you can take that away. There's not this giant strategy that you don't know. It's really this this easy and this hard in many ways. So I hope that was useful. I love you, Sabrina. Thank you for all the hearts. Um, I hope this was useful to you guys. If you have questions, feel free to drop them. If you're watching the replay, um, let me know. I don't think I've ever gotten so many hearts in my whole life. I love it. Thank you. Um, and I love you guys, and I hope you have a good Monday, and I hope this was helpful, and I hope that the takeaway is that you can do this. Nobody knows something you don't. You are so capable and so able to create exactly what we've all created. So I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.